comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. An old man lives alone and mostly forgotten or ignored, except for that brief ten minutes twice a day. A young woman relapses again into a pattern of self-harm in her small flat. A single mother goes hungry so her children can eat. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. God with us, strengthen your church through politics and prayer, through advocacy and activism, through listening and learning to comfort my people. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Britain, here is your God. Hi there, John Kirkby here, and I wanted to bring you a brief Christmas message. 2020 has been a year like no other. And first of all, I want to recognise the challenges and the grief that many have suffered. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and faced insurmountable problems. COVID has significantly impacted CAP's ability to do what we are called to do. However, by God's grace and our entire UK team rose to the challenge and we've still been able to continue our life-serving work and seen over 2,200 people go debt-free so far this year. Thanks to the incredible churches we work with who have been so amazing in adapting the service in the face of uncertainty and made it possible to keep reaching out to people who desperately need our help. Like many, we face huge uncertainties moving into 2021 and we believe that there will be a tsunami of need for our services coming our way in the coming months and years. So your continued support has never been more important. So however you engage with our work, whether you're praying, giving, being involved in running a service or help to spread the CAP message, we want to say thank you for your support. Let's celebrate the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and know that he will be with us whatever the future holds for us. And Lizzie and I pray that you'll be able to praise him and have a good Christmas, whatever the challenges you face. Thank you for everything you've done to help Christians Against Poverty change thousands of lives.
even when we're isolated. When we are grieving. When we're struggling. When we have hit rock bottom. We're never alone. This year has been unbelievable. But we have pulled together. We've worked hard to care for people. To feed people. To help people. To heal people. And we've said loud and clear that people matter more. That injustice is unacceptable. That our community is vital. Our buildings have been closed. But we have been at work. God's love is uncontainable. In times of despair. And in times of hope. You are loved. This Christmas and always, whoever you are. And whatever you have been through this year. God is with you. God's love is with, with me. me. God is with us. 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 Good morning, church, and welcome. We're so glad you could join us online for this Sunday morning service. Why not use our new chat function to let us know who you are and where you're watching from? We also have a prayer request function and have a team stood by ready to pray for you. We hope you have an amazing Sunday, and I pray that this service blesses you.
We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favour came to an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and promise. Emmanuel, God with us. So we light this fourth candle with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confusing and confused world, is a peace that passes all understanding. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Helen Hooley, Minister in the Lincoln Circuit, and we start this morning with prayer. When I say, for your coming and coming again in Christ, would you say, we thank you. For your coming and coming again in Christ, we thank you. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this glad time of year, this Advent season which reminds us of so much and which reveals so wonderfully the extent of your love. For your coming and coming again in Christ, we thank you. This is a time for looking back and remembering the birth of your Son, light into our darkness. A time for looking forward and anticipating his coming again, as he returns to establish your kingdom and to rule in your name. But above all, a time for the present moment, for examining our lives, searching our hearts, exploring your word and renewing our faith. A time for recognising more fully that Jesus is with us each moment of every day now and always. For your coming and coming again in Christ, we thank you. Loving God, you came to our world in humility, born of Mary in a stable. You will come once more in glory through the risen and ascended Christ. You are with us even now as we speak, here through your Holy Spirit, making Jesus real. We praise you for the great truth of Advent, for your coming and coming again in Christ. We thank you. In his name. Amen. Joy 
Chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. To a girl named Mary, an angel came. Greeting, favoured one. The Lord is with you. The Christmas message for the Methodist Church this year is, God is with us. And here we have this assurance of the presentness of God given to Mary. And this sets the tone for all that is to come. Favoured one. Mary does not know that her life is about to be upended. She does not know that the favour upon her will not translate to personal gain or popularity or privilege. God often uses Gabriel's as holy interruptions that shift the course of life. Unexpectedly, suddenly, unanticipated, Gabriel's appear and alter what seem to be fixed and predictable paths. Whether it is Hagar being shown a spring of water in the wilderness, or Moses and the burning bush, angels come and disrupt the normal course of life. But Gabriel comes with a message. He calls Mary favoured and affirms that she is in the company of the Lord, God of Israel. What reminds you? Maybe a story in the Bible, maybe a memory, one of your own stories. What reminds you in the midst of the mess of this world that God sees you, that God favours you? What helps you to remember that every day? Still, to a girl named Mary, an angel came. Why Mary? Mary is from a very humble background. It's no wonder that she was perplexed and pondered. 
Mary's life circumstances would reasonably cause her to question, am I favoured? Is God with me? What will this favour entail? And yet, God so often speaks to people. Rather than ask why Mary would have a divine intervention, perhaps we should ask, why not Mary? And then Mary speaks. She is given a voice in this story. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. In this moment, what was happening to Mary didn't have to be received as good news. Who is this God? What did Mary know about this God? That when her life was about to be turned upside down, her response was to trust. Who is God to you? Do you have a story to share? Why do you trust God? Or maybe you are not there yet, not yet able to believe that nothing will be impossible with God. Indeed, to a girl named Mary, an angel came. We need to be careful not to romanticise this birth story. Imagine the complexities of pregnancy in the ancient world. Pregnancy was the most dangerous thing that could happen to a woman, and not just about the chance of dying. Even when all was well, imagine Mary's pregnant body continuing with the rhythms of cleaning fish, planting and harvesting grain, kneading bread for the evening meal. God has said, Nothing will be impossible. Imagine what that means for Mary, the utter risk for her life, her sense of comfort, her vulnerability. The testimony of her body has some resonances with illness this year, as we consider what getting sick has meant for people. For some, the symptoms have been light, for others, there have been weeks and months of incapacity and fear. For some, it has meant death. God's favour wasn't all good news for Mary. But God does not need us to do more. When we have so little energy or time or these days technical know-how to give, rather we need to slow down and let God build us, dwell in us, in humble, simple ways. Let me quote you from my commentary. See now, God incarnate, covered in the blood and amniotic fluid. See Jesus with the beasts, nursing from the milk of an unwed teen in the cover of night. God says, when did I ever demand a temple from you. I go where you go. I am with you. And I'd like to finish with a few words from Courtney Bugs, another commentary I read this week. God with Mary. God with us. This Advent season, may we sit with the assurance that God is with us. As we reflect on a tumultuous year, unprecedented as it is so aptly referred to, may we receive the words of Gabriel to Mary as our own. God is with us. The divine visits an unsuspecting young girl named Mary, and the divine visits us. May the joys and sorrows of life be viewed through and conditioned by this conviction. God is with us. Even as a young girl by the name of Mary was impacted by the social realities of her day, we too are immersed in and squeezed by the societal challenges of 21st century Lincoln. 
and God is with us. Gabriel's reminders assure us, comfort us. Yes, God is with us. Amen. And now our prayers for others. When I say, reach out to them in their need, would you say, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. Reach out to them in their need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. Let's pray. Loving God, accept our glad thanksgiving for all you have given us, and hear now our prayers for your world. We pray for those for whom there is no celebration, the poor and the hungry, the homeless and the sick, the lonely and the bereaved, the oppressed and the persecuted. Reach out to them in their need and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. We pray for all those who, for whom the celebration is marred by fear, those who are anxious for themselves or a loved one, who see no hope in the future, or who live under the constant threat of danger. Reach out to them in their need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. We pray for those who wrestle with grief, those whose lives have been broken by tragedy, who live each day in perpetual shadow, crushed by the burden of sorrow. Reach out to them in their need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. We pray for all those who feel isolated, those who feel unloved and unwanted, who find it hard to show love towards others, or whose relationships have been broken by cruelty, discord, division. Reach out to them in their need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. Loving God, May your light reach into the darkest places of the world, so that there may be hope rather than despair, joy rather than sorrow, and love rather than hatred. Come now to our world through Jesus Christ, to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. Reach out to them in their need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. In his name we pray. Amen. And our blessing for today comes from Romans chapter 16. All of our praise rises to the one who is strong enough to make you strong, exactly as preached in Jesus Christ precisely as revealed in the mystery, kept secret for so long, but now an open book through the prophetic scriptures. All of the nations of the world can now know the truth and be brought into obedient belief, carrying out the orders of God, who got all of this started down to the very last letter. All our praise is focused through Jesus, on this incomparably wise God. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels their harps of gold peace on the earth good will to men from hands all gracious king
Now 